All right, so I'm about to show you guys something that years ago I kind of wished was always around, and that was an app on my phone to be able to control at least some aspects of Nina. Check in on the images, see what it's doing without needing to go back in and sit at my desktop or carry a laptop around. Well, somebody's done it. That's what I'm going to go over here. We're going to install a new plugin in Nina called Touch and Stars, and it'll give you access not only from your phone, but from anything that has a web browser. So let's take a look at it. My name is Rich, and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so before you install the Touch and Stars plugin within Nina, you also need to make sure you have the Advanced API plugin installed as well. I have both installed, but it's pretty straightforward. Click Advanced API over here where it says uninstall for me. It'll say install for you. When it's complete, make sure API enabled is turned on, that your port is 1888. That's the default. It'll already be populated for you. And also you want to turn on use access control, allow origin header. So with those two options on and the port set, you can go ahead and do the same thing and install the Touch and Stars plugin. Again, mine says uninstall because it's already installed. Just click install. Once it's finished, come in and make sure that web app enabled is turned on. Leave it on port 5000. The control headers you can leave off and read the description down here. This is really only relevant if you're going to make this accessible to the internet. I'm not. I'm just using it within my own network, so I'm leaving that off. And then you'll see right here we've got three addresses to access Touch and Stars. That's all you need to do is install these two plugins and it's ready to go. The first one is localhost, which means this computer only that Nina's running on. If I tried to use localhost outside of this computer, it's not going to work. So either use IP address or this host. The difference between the two is obviously the one that says IP address is using the IP address on port 5000. And the one that's listed as this host is using my computer name at port 5000. I use the IP address one only because I have a static IP address assigned to this computer that'll never change. And when I run this from my phone, I have an older Samsung Galaxy phone. And for whatever reason, it has a hard time resolving DNS names such as RedCat51. So I just use the IP address for my phone. But either one should work for you. If you have problems with the host name, just use the IP address. If you end up using the IP address, make sure that you go into your router and tell your router to always reserve this address for your computer that Nina is running on. So I'm going to click on the IP address one. And it's going to open a browser up on my Nina computer. And you can see it says, Welcome to Touch and Stars. And it's getting ready for your quick setup. I'm not going to do it here because, again, I'm on my Nina PC. So I am going to take my address here and copy it and load it up on a browser on my desktop computer here. So we're just going to click Confirm, select your language. You can use GPS coordinates. This will be if you're on your phone or your tablet that has a GPS chip in it. Again, I'm on my desktop, so I don't have that. I'm just going to click Confirm and then confirm the setup. You can run through the tutorial, but that's what this video is about, so I'm going to skip it for you. So we'll start with this button right here. This says equipment. If I click on it, I can connect all my devices all at once, or I can connect them individually. I'm not gonna do that right now in the web browser. I'm gonna show you guys on the phone, which looks identical to this here. But I did wanna show you that you can do this from any desktop PC, anything with a web browser, whether it's Chrome or Edge or Safari, whether it's a Mac, Windows, as long as you have a web browser, this will all work. It's not dependent on your operating system at all. So let's go back over to my Red Cat and close this. So I'm back over on my Nina PC. And like I said before, this can be ran from any web browser, whether it's on a laptop, a desktop, or an Apple phone, or an Android phone. They do, however, have an app specifically for Android. So down here where it says more info, if you go to their GitHub repository and scroll down to the bottom here, you can see we're in German. So there's an English version link right here. Click on that. And underneath Android app, there is an APK file. So this is not in the Play Store. You'll have to download this file to your phone and then install it from your downloads folder. They currently do not have an iOS app. They say right here, he's not even sure that that's going to happen because of all the hurdles that Apple has in place. So again, you don't need the app. You can use your web browser. It's identical to the Android app. So there's really no real benefit, I suppose, to it besides just having an app instead of using a web browser every time. So let's jump over to my phone and we'll close this down so we can watch the magic happen here. All right, so with Touch and Stars opened, again, same screen we just saw on the web interface. If I hit the extreme left button here, the one with the little chain links, you can see how that's where you connect all your equipment. But before we get started, we're gonna go back over to the button over on the right-hand side, the gear icon. And I just wanted to show you another nice feature of it. And it is a little bit buggy. Keep in mind the software is still in beta. 
but you can see I have two sessions configured, one for my red cat, which is what we're looking at now, and you can see that it's active with that green check mark. And then I have one for my SCT back in the observatory. So I can switch back and forth between my two rigs, depending on which one that I want to control. So again, we're on the red cat. So from the phone, if I was to hit connect all and we watch the Nina interface, we should start to see messages popping up that it's connecting all of my equipment for me. And I initiated that all from the app on the phone. And my Pegasus power box is giving me issues again. That's not uncommon. So just ignore that. That is not the app. That's the Pegasus ASCOM driver. Sometimes it takes a couple shots to get it going. All right. So like I said, the Pegasus is giving me an issue right now. That's why it still shows connect switch on my phone, but it did connect everything else. And up top, you have all of your different equipment settings. So the next one over is my camera. I can actually start a capture from here if I wanted to. We have autofocus, so I can run my autofocus right from my phone. This is my mount, so I can park it, unpark it, slew it around using the buttons that are on there. There's the guider, I can start my guiding, stop it, tell it to calibrate when it starts. It's tied into our flat wizard here. The next button over, you can actually search moving around and either tap on something and tell it to go to your framing assistant or you can use the search button up here in the top right and enter in the object that you're interested in. And then when it takes you there, obviously you can tap on that and tell it go to framing. I mean, it's complete remote control. So let's get outside. I want to show you one of my favorite features of this app and what I was really excited about when I learned that this program was being developed. Okay, so the one thing that I was really excited about with this app is being able to do my polar alignment from my phone. Usually I'm out here with my laptop and you know, not a big deal, but if it's wet out here, I don't have a table to set it on. Sometimes if I do, there's snow on it, if it's winter time or it's wet and you know, that's a problem. So I have to hold it. Now I don't have to lug my laptop out. I can just use the phone and come over to my three-point polar alignment and then just simply say start alignment helps if I take the lens cap off first so it's slewed to its first position it's going to take its image and plate solve it and then do the other two images and plate solve those as well to give me my polar alignment error and we should be pretty good because I did this last night but we'll see I'm just watching the last messages here on the bottom where it shows me exposure is running and it's slewing to the first position that was successful so now it's going to the second position <laughs> this for me is kind of a lifesaver i love this second position was successful now it's moving to the third and once it gets through this one it should show me my errors across the board so all three positions have been plate solved and it's showing me i'm 15 degrees off it must have sunk in the soft dirt over the day at this point i would just start making my adjustments and i'm not going to sit through and do all this stuff but just to give you guys an idea i just moved the scope down just a little bit to get better than at 11 minutes that we're looking at for the altitude error plates all failed probably because it was imaging as i was moving the scope so we gotta let it run through another exposure now it wants to go up 21 degrees but like i said i'm not going to go through this whole routine with you guys you understand polar alignment this is just to show you that you can do it from your phone now so i'm going to stop the alignment and then we're going to change over to my mount and tell it to go home and then if i wanted to i could also run my autofocus from here so jump over to the focuser tab and just hit start autofocus you know keep in mind this is literally just a remote for nina the, the software itself isn't doing any of these functions it's just sending commands through the api plugin that we installed on nina so nina's still doing all the heavy lifting for us this is literally just a remote control for it and you can see we have statuses up top autofocus is active moving stopped so it's letting you know whenever it's moving the focuser captures running shows you your current focuser position i mean this this is really slick if we come back over to our start capture we can loop it just like you can in nina we can check our settings so you can see my gain my temperature and my offset and set those temperatures and turn the cooling on turn my dew heater on and it can set my exposure time we'll try and take one exposure it's supposed to be clear tonight but there's some thin clouds up there of course so let's just do I don't know, let's try a 10 second exposure and see what we get. So we'll hit start capture. Once it's done, it should load the image for us and show us what it got. Yep, and it did. So I can open that up and there's my little 10 second exposure. Pinch to zoom, X to close. So I mean, they're, <laughs> they're really knocking this out of the park. Everything's being ported over. You'll be able to absolutely run everything it looks like from here. It also will show you, I don't have a sequence running right now, but if you have a sequence set up in Nina, once you start that sequence, you'll be able to see it here, as well as be able to um, stop and, and restart those sequences or clear out the sequence if you wanted to start over 
Okay, so I moved over by the observatory to show you the one last piece about this app. I switched over to my observatory profile where my SCT is at to show you that we also have dome control. So if you're controlling your observatory through Nina, then you can open and close your roof or you can open and close your shutter on your observatory. You can see on my screen here, not all the functions that you're used to seeing in Nina are currently available, but all the statuses appear to be in place up on top. Right now I can open or close the shutter and then also stop it if there was an emergency for, or I just wanted to open it up halfway for some reason. There's no controls for rotation. There's no um, option in there for me to be able to tell it to follow the telescope. But again, it's in beta, so I'm sure it's coming. But just, just another really cool feature of this thing. So if I just tap open shutter, you can see the shutter opens up and that's that's just cool, man. So that's all I have. I hope you guys check out the plugin. I think it's really cool. I wanna take this time to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate all your time. I appreciate everybody's time that you spend watching my videos. We'll see you on the next one. Take care and clear skies.